have a great weather window and are sailing from Maratua to Manado, Sulawesi. The trip is about 350 nautical miles and will take us two and a half to three days. Our friends on Alimite are also sailing direct. And of course, that means it's a race. Leaving this place is sad. It's truly gorgeous and a great spot to dive, explore, and enjoy. The kids also have watch responsibilities aboard field trip. As they've grown older, their responsibilities have grown with them. Last night, a small bird flew inside our cockpit and decided to make the helm his new home. We're about 50 nautical miles offshore, so there's not any place the bird can actually land other than atop floating debris or here aboard field trip. This bird is just so cute. It's been aboard for a day and is probably hungry and dehydrated, so the kids try to feed it using a paintbrush. Soon we'll just see how successful this rehabilitation project was. Well, things didn't go so well for our little birdie. He didn't uh, make it last night for the night, so we've got Michael out here ready to do his uh, burial duty. bird up on the by the cockpit all night um, trying to uh, uh, sleep I guess but he never really quite made it so it's really unfortunate. So here we are we're getting close to Manado northern Sulawesi. We've been on a three night passage. It'll be three and a half full days and we are just now arriving to the anchorage. We've just gotten internet connectivity, so um, Illimite is the sailing vessel we've been traveling with and they are getting their <laughs> 4G on and um, yeah, so it's nice to be able to check email and everything. So we're just bobbing along, going slowly. We got only six knots of wind and we're traveling about three knots with our big code zero out. And yeah, it's a pretty uh, calm entrance. After a good sail, so quite a bit of motoring, but you'll see the volcan volcanic island in the distance. That's supposed to be some really good diving over there, but no place to anchor, so we'll have to figure that out. We have to take a speedboat or whatever. There's our code zero. Doing its thing in this light wind, and yeah, so. That's the story. We're happy to be landing in Monado after being out at sea for three nights. Here we are entering Monado and you'll see the fad that we just passed. A big bundle of a steel drum and all kinds of floaty stuff. And then attached to it is this little fishing hut that's floating. So that's what we have to watch out for as we're transversing these waters, traversing these waters. Not something you want to run into. Upon our arrival, we were greeted with full fanfare by the Indonesian Air Force. We truly feel honored.
After the jets, paragliders joined in the celebration for our arrival. What a welcome. Needless to say, we felt honored that Monado had put on such a show for our arrival. We're happy to be here to start exploring this unique part of Indonesia. Today is Tarsier Day. So we're gonna to try to go to the Tankoko National Park here. Yeah, so we're heading over to shore, these nice black sand shores. We're going to the Black Sand Resort where they've organized us a car that is going to take us to the National Park. So hopefully we'll see some tarsiers, hornbills, couscous. Not the rice thing, but the animal. All right, we'll see what we can find. Till the sun comes over the hills. Make your Everybody's ready to go. We load up our dinghy and head over to Elimitate to pick up our friends for the journey into the jungle. I will winds are howling. We know field trip is secure, but it's always a bit edgy leaving the boat in windy and possibly squally conditions. But it's 100 oh. to get in the park and 100 for a guide, so oh. it's per person. It is. Yeah, we'll find out when they get there. In general, we find the parks and attractions in Indonesia very reasonably priced. <laughs> if you're a local, the costs are even less. <laughs> As we drive to the park, we pass through the local market. This market also has a wet market in the back. It's where you can purchase what we would call exotic meats, like dog, snake, bats, etc. It's a part of the local culture and what makes this part of Indonesia unique. We really enjoy traveling on land when we come to new locations. It's interesting to see local architecture and how each area is set up a little differently. In this area, the homes seem more modern and affluent. This is not the case when you venture outside the larger towns and into the smaller villages. After a comfortable car ride, harrowing car ride, we finally got here to the uh, National Park. How'd it go, honey? <laughs> We're all a bit green after a, it's a rough ride. Very uh, windy, curvy, road. swervy. But, but we're here. It's crazy because it feels like Mark just said it feels like we're in Arizona because it's so dry and hot. It's weird. We've been in such humid environments for so long. Yeah, it's weird. Very dry. So, but should be good. Hey, Michael, how you feeling? Okay. No. You feel a little sick too. Very. We are lucky today as a troop of black tailless macaques roam around the trail. This species of macaques is endemic to this area and are regularly spotted in this park. They seem pretty, pretty low key. Kind of. Just trudging along. Trudging along. Hiking for about 30 minutes, we head deeper into the jungle in search of the tarsier and any other animals we can find. Gary and Noel guide us fearlessly through the bush. Nothing escapes their keen eye for finding the rare and even invisible. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. Found it's awesome. My apple. <laughs> Your apple. And the backpack. And the backpack. <laughs> In your camera. Fortunately, we were patient, and our faith in our trusty guide Gary paid off. He was able to spot, of all things, a bear cat in the trees. He insisted it was only a possum. We gently reminded Gary that we weren't in Missouri anymore, but rather Sulawesi. And indeed, this was, in fact, a You're wild bear cat on a log listening to birds. 
There's supposed to be a couple of hornbills, a female and a male. Females in the nest, and the male will come out to feed and then bring food back to the female. So it is almost sundown, it's like dusk, and so we're waiting for the male to exit the nest and start feeding so we can watch them. And what happened, what we see back there? That one? Oh, we've seen a couple of cool things. We saw um, two couscous, which are kind of related to possums. They're marsupials, and they have prehensile tails that they use to climb. And their face kind of looks like a bear. Um, and they mate for life. What else do we learn about them? Two species. Oh, there's two species. One that's nocturnal and one that feeds during the day. The nocturnal one is smaller than the daytime one. And we also saw a teeny little tarsier. Is it a monkey? I don't know. We have to study some on that, but it's tiny and it has really like um, gecko-like fingers and really big ears and very big eyes. So we saw it poking its head out of the tree and hopefully we'll go back and see him again and he'll be there yeah. waiting for us. So here we are and we're we're on the which side of the Wallace line? East. We're on the eastern side of the Wallace line so that's why we have the marsupials here, right. um, and not elephants, no pachyderms. Um, yeah, so this is it, our hike in Tangico, Tangicoco Park. So hello family and friends from Tangicoco National, National Park, Park in uh, Sulawesi. Sulawesi. Woo, we saw tarsiers today. Tarsiers. And frogfish yesterday. Yay! Frogfish yesterday. <laughs> and hornbills and couscous. Couscous. And it's been a great trip. Yeah, it's been really good. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Well, our friends here from Alimite. Yes. Yeah. Gary and. <laughs> I'm joking, I know. All right. That's it from the National Park. Okay. All right. We'll let this little tarsier in the tree get some sleep as we head home. Join us next time as we get to tow a disabled yacht and begin our sail to Palau.